All right, seventh grade, our last video together. I'm sure you guys are real happy about that. <laughs> Certainly, uh, this was not the uh, way we all saw this year ending. The last two months have certainly been unique and uh, new and different for all of us. But you know what? Uh, it is what it is. You adapt, you roll with the punches, and uh, you know what? You just do what you got to do. So we're going to go uh, talk through compound events today in probability. I don't think you will find it too difficult because the words independent and dependent, I think you've already got a grasp on those. So you should be able to transfer that knowledge relatively easy. And then basically the new math here is just going to be us saying you multiply, which I think you already know how to do. So let's zoom in here and let's take a look at the new vocabulary. So a compound event in probability consists of two or more events. More than one thing is happening, all right? And that's why we call it compound. There are two different scenarios you can find yourself in when talking, when dealing with compound events. Independent events are events where the occurrence of one does not affect the occurrence of the other. So in other words, again, I think you have a handle on what this word means. They are independent of each other. Whatever happens in the first event in no way, shape, or form affects what happens in the second event. Hence, they are independent, like the word says. The way you calculate the probability of independent events happening together is right here in the key concepts box. Again, you can always pause these videos, copy them down into your notes if you'd like, okay? But what makes events A and B independent is that the probability of the one does not affect the probability of the other. To calculate that probability, the probability of event A, then event B, all you do is multiply their independent probabilities. So we've talked about how to calculate probabilities. Here we will be talking about more than one of them. And the way you answer this question is by multiplying. Let's take a look here at example one and calculate the probability of two independent events. It says you and a friend play a game twice. There's your two events. You're playing the game twice. What is the probability that you win both games and it says assume that the probability you win is one half so they have to give you that because when they're talking about something like a game how, how would you know what probability to use well luckily they give that probability to you and here it's one half you win the way you calculate this probability of winning both games is like it says up here what's the probability you win the first game that would be event a one half and we will multiply that times the probability you win the second game, okay? That is the second event. You see that right here, probability win and then win. The first win is one half. The second win is also one half. These are independent events. The one game has no effect on the other game and you just multiply one half times one half and you get one fourth. The probability that you will win both games is only one out of four. Quick check number one here says, find the probability that you win and then lose. So we are calculating the probability here of a win followed by a loss. We're gonna multiply the two independent probabilities. What's the probability we win? The problem said the probability you win is one half. We will multiply that now times the probability that we lose. Well, interestingly enough, if the probability that you win is one half, what's the probability that you're gonna lose? Magically, it's also one half. And that actually gives you the same answer as the example problem. You have a one in four chance of winning the first game and then losing the second game. One out of four. That's it. Multiply the probabilities. Okay, let's talk about dependent events. So it says here, suppose you play a game with cards that are numbered one through five. You draw two cards at random. You draw the first card and do not replace it. Keywords right there. The probability in the second draw depends on the result of the first draw. Does that make sense? I hope it does. If you are not putting the first card back, the game has completely changed the second time around. All right, and they have a little diagram over here to try and illustrate that for you. When you take the first card, you have all five of them. One, two, three, four, five. Now you select the card at random, all right? And let's say, for example, you get the four. If you are not putting this four back in the pile, your second draw, your, the second time you take a card, has completely different probability because you don't have five cards anymore. Now you only have four cards. 
and the four is not there either. So you have a completely different probability. So what happens the second time depends on what happens the first time, and that's why these are called dependent events. If the occurrence of one event affects the probability of the other, then we say that they are dependent events. The way you calculate the probability of two dependent events is exactly the same. You multiply them. But what you have to consider is this piece right here. The second probability is going to be after the first thing has happened, which means typically you're gonna change the denominator for sure and potentially the numerator, not always, but sometimes. That's basically what that's gonna mean. So let's take a look at example two here. It says, you select a card at random from those below. The card has the letter M. Without replacing the M, you select the second card. Find the probability that you select the card with the letter A after you select the M, all right? So I wanna be very clear about this problem. We do not have to multiply anything here. They're telling us what happens first. We don't care about that probability. They're only asking us about the second probability. They're not asking us to do this whole thing here, okay? They're basically just asking us for this piece right here. They just want this one probability. The M is already gone. Now what's the probability we get an A? That's their question. Let's take a look here at the letters we've got. So mathematics has how many letters? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We selected an M. So that means one of these M's is gone. So now, and we are not putting it back. It says without replacing. So if we don't put that M back, now how many cards are left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And how many of them are A's? One, two A's. So what's the probability of getting an A after the M is gone? There are two A's, and now there are 10 cards, because the M is gone, remember. And two out of 10 is that probability. Always simplify probabilities, one out of five. So there was no multiplying in this problem. It was just wanting that second piece probability. Here in example three, we will be multiplying. You select a card from a bucket that contains 26 cards, A through Z, without looking. Without replacing the first card, you select the second one. Find the probability of choosing a C and then an M. So it's our alphabet, A through Z, 26. Probability of C, then M, without replacing. If we were replacing, this would be independent events. And then it'd be what we did on the other page. But they said we're not replacing, which makes this dependent. C then M, what's the probability of getting that C? Well, there's only one C in our alphabet out of the 26 letters, so that's one out of 26. What about the probability of getting an M after that C is gone? Because remember, we are not putting our first card back. Well, there's only one M in our alphabet, but now look what happens to our denominator. It went from 26 down to 25 because we didn't put that first card back, all right? That's what was going on up here. One of the numbers was gone. Now we only have four. Same thing here. One of the letters is gone. Now we only have 25 and only one of them is a C. Now we multiply one times one is one. On your calculator, 26 times 25 is 650. The probability of this happening is not very likely. Only one out of 650 times will you pick a C first and then an M second. So quick check number two is we're using the same cards from example two. So that's the mathematics one. We select a T without replacing it. What's the probability that you will now get an S? So they want the probability that you get an S after a T, an S after a T. If one of those T's is gone, now we have 10 cards remaining. How many of them are an S? Only one out of the 10 is an S this probability would be one out of 10. One S out of the 10 remaining cards after the T is gone. Quick check number three changes the game a little bit. Uh, this is now the cards in the bucket, all our cards, A through Z, the 26 cards in the bucket. What they do is now they add another 26 cards. So now we've got doubles of every letter. We've got the first 26 A through Z, now they're putting in a second 26 A through Z. So now how many cards are in that bucket? 26 and 26, I hope you can add. 52 cards in the bucket now. We are not replacing. They want to know what's the probability we get one of the J's first and then the second J. The first time you reach your hand in the bucket, how many J's are in there? Two, remember we doubled everything up. So two out of the 52 are J's. Now, if we do not replace the first J, 
the second time we reach in the bucket, what's the probability we get the remaining one J? And now there's only 51 cards in there. So we have to multiply these. Now, I always like to simplify before I multiply. Two over 52 will simplify to one over 26. And then you will multiply straight across on the top. One times one is one. On the bottom, on your calculator, 26 times 51. I'm actually gonna have to look that up because I can't do that in my head. 1,326. Is that gonna happen? Not all that often, no. Only one time out of 1,326 times should you expect to pull out both J's. Very, 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 very unlikely to happen. But remember with probabilities, it's just what's probable. You might get the two J's on the 500th time you did it, but you also might not get the two J's until the 5,000th time you do it, because no one can predict the future. All we are doing here with probability is saying mathematically what is likely to happen. In case you don't know, this is why casinos always make money. Because every game in a casino, the probability is that the casino wins and that the player loses. Does that guarantee a win or a loss on any single individual game? Absolutely not. There are no guarantees. But here's what the casino knows. The casino knows math. And if the game, whatever that game is, blackjack, craps, the slot machines, if the game is programmed, if the game is designed and developed for the probability of the casino always winning, or as the expression would be, the house always winning, they know that if they put these games out there and they play these games again and again and again, day after day, week after week, year after year, they will always win because that's how the math works out, okay? So that's what you need to understand about probability. Never is it more evident that probability works, that the math works, than when you look at a casino. That's why they have the biggest, shiniest, most fancy buildings in the world, because they always make money. Is there ever a guarantee? No, but over the long run, the math never lies. All right, so since this is our last video together, I thought I would turn the camera around. Let me zoom out here. So uh, yeah, like I said at the beginning of the video, this was certainly not how uh, we saw this year ending. We got through it. Uh, hopefully in the fall, things will return to some sense of normalcy, but who knows? But uh, whatever it is, we'll always put our best foot forward. And uh, like I said, we'll, uh, we'll roll with the punches. We'll take it as it comes. And you know what, at the end of the day, you'll be better for it. So uh, have a great summer. Make sure you get the work done for me. Any of the, any of the lessons that you haven't done, I think this is lesson number five for us that was graded. Um, all the chapter nine stuff, all the stuff that I have videos for. So get it all done. There's no penalties for being late, but if you don't get it done, I've got to give you zero. We'll see you next year, later. I ran up a check, I might do it again Enemies close, had me thinking they friends Ten toes down, I'll be free to the end Crib outside the city, I don't feel safe in my hands Took so many years, I'm just waiting for the wins I'm in debt to no one but the one who took my sins I do it for real, there's no reason to pretend If I do it once, I do it again Add it up, add it up. Bankroll. bankroll, euro, euro. Peso. peso, add it up Everything is on me, gon' back it up Matter what? Told you I'ma do me, why you hatin' on me? It's not adding up I do roll like a Mack truck Country heart, I'ma cop a farm and go act up Lot of scars, I was cold hearted, now I'm backed up Keep it real, I do this once a month, I don't rap much I just take the money and go stack up Only buying car heart, car car, take it tatted up All that other bull, it don't matter much You only climb me, I put the ladders up No fault I done doubled up on the workload I think I fell in love with the bankroll Pray up, get money, then we lay low Then we lay low Add it up, add it up. bankroll, bankroll. Euro. Euro, peso, peso. Add, it up. add it up I'm just doing me, everything is on me Oh, you matter what? Add it up, add it up. bankroll, bankroll. Euro. Euro, peso, peso. Add it up I'm just doing me, everything is on me Oh, you matter what? Add it up, add it up. It's all me, everything is on me, gon' back it up. Matter what? Told you I'ma do me, why you
you hate. 